stuff that we have to consider. So inputs and outputs of the sport around what we where we want to go, where we want to get to over over the medium and long term. And that's for me tonight. It's really important that we try and put our kind of long term long term hats on. So what we're really looking for from this consultation um, process, and this is you know obviously too one of the things we mentioned I mentioned last year at the AGM was. Uh, and what's happening? What's been happening over the last month or so is we've had the survey, we've had uh, we've had a conversation with the presidents a few weeks ago, um, and with others around the sport. And tonight is a really important element of that consultation as well to hear directly from the membership as to what uh, what are the important considerations as we as a committee, because the committee is representative of the membership. We, as we get to a point at this year's AGM where, as Glenn mentioned, we table. Uh, some details around the important decisions we need to make around around our future. So that's about how we, you know, how we deploy resources, what it costs to do the sport, how how many bells and whistles we have we have in the in the competitions we deliver, etc. Um, so you can see there on the slide, there's you know there's a few things there's a few things to consider tonight. And I'm, I'm quite keen on rabbiting on a bit. Quite keen for us to talk less tonight and to hear more from from all of you that have given up your time. So in a moment we're going to break into break up into groups and and spend a, the majority of the evening having a conversation around, around uh, what's in the discussion paper um, and, you've, and the responses you've given to the survey. But broad brush strokes, broad brush strokes there's, a few, there's a few key considerations. There's um, you know, a, a big part of those membership numbers, again, and the cost, the cost, uh, cost details that I mentioned a moment ago, is, is you know, one, one key consideration amongst all that is growth. So, so by definition, if, we've, if the membership's getting slightly smaller, and it's not you know, it's not like there's a crisis. We've just had fairly stable membership. There was one year where it went up by about 100, uh, and in the other years it's gone down by about 80 to 120. So, it's, but we're still in that sort of four and a half thousand range. Um, but that's not growing. So, you know, if the sport was attracting more, the strategy of the, of the almost almost by default, the strategy of the sport and the committee has to be to try and deliver deliver the the, the sport to to our members in, in such a way that helps. Uh, helps us grow, helps more, help, helps us attract more participants to the sport that we all love. So one of the considerations is, okay, we have that has, we haven't collectively we haven't been successful at, at that for the last few years. <coughs> what are we? Or what's the collective wisdom in the room? What do we? What do we think will work better? Do we think that's the right thing to consider? Are we happy with? You know, do we accept that this is where we're at? And if so, what are the implications of that? Um, Another piece around fun, around costs and funding is, um, you know, through the years there have been various tranches of, of government funding that have propped us up a little bit. That's not that's not there to the same extent anymore. So that's a, that's a consideration that the committee has to take very seriously in our financials. Um, the demographics and our officials. That's another really important consideration. Again, strategic. If we nothing's going to happen quickly, but you can imagine in 10 and 20 years' time, that's a that's a serious consideration. If we if we stay where we're at. That has big implications for costs, um, and again around growth, changing expectations of athletes, coaches, clubs, and officials. Everyone, uh, everyone lives in a broad, lives in, and participates in a broader market and community, and has has reference points into other sports and other experiences, doing things that aren't even sport related. So people people now live in a world where you can do most things very simply on digital platforms. So everyone knows what, what I'm talking about there. Um, so. You can't stand still. So, as a, so if we want to attract new, new, not only attract new athletes, but just keep the athletes that we've got happy and satisfied, we need to. I think we need to present a professional, professional uh, product, in a way that's comparable to to other experiences that people have in their lives. Um, and obviously, part of that is innovating and you know, thinking about thinking about how we can do all this creatively because we are not a rich sport. We don't have, you know, we have, and I'm sure this will be a topic of conversation. You know, profile, um, support from government, uh, and inputs from inputs from other uh, other uh, uh, avenues in the community are all really important, really important considerations. But we can't wave a magic wand or snap our fingers and change the way we're considered in the community to have an influx of of money that that we can then invest to grow. So we have to be creative, and we have to work with what we've got. Do you want to hit the next slide, Glenn? Yep. So I'll, I'll just finish up by, um, so I'm assuming, we're going to kind of take as read and assume that everyone's read or skimmed the, the discussion paper, but actually even if you haven't, it's not, you know, this is not, um, I can very quickly summarise here. What we've done in the paper is just talk about many of the things that I've just discussed and then framed at the end of it, uh, you know, intentionally a little bit provocatively, four options. 
So again, this is a strategy conversation. It's a conversation around strategy. Even strategy is a bit of a loaded word. It's, a, it's just a conversation around uh, how we're going to go in the future. And those considerations that I've just discussed mean, mean that if we can get our heads around as a group um, thinking about some choices, and the committee doesn't have a barrow to push with any of these, these choices. It's intentionally painting a picture of a range of options that we can all consider. And anything in, in the cracks of these or, or separate to those is, is, is fair game for comment and what we deliver back at the AGM. Um, because the, the final point I'll make is because obviously the committee is you know, elected by the membership and is representative of the membership, but it's a relatively small group of people. And this is a big, serious conversation. And therefore, we've published a paper, published a survey, had focus groups, and frankly, if you're having conversations out there in, the, in your clubs and you've got a view, the door's really open at the moment for, for those, views, those views to be entered into this conversation. So um, that's just a bit of kind of background and context. Hopefully it's you know, not, not too much. And as I said, I think the most important thing tonight is to, is to get into the conversations and hear from all of you. So uh, Glenn, do you want to, are we jumping sure. up to the next? Yep. Yep. So just before um, we break up, or we don't break up into groups, you're already in, in groups, I just wanted to give you a bit of a, uh, an insight into the survey um, that has been very well received. Um, AV's done a number of surveys over probably longer than the five years I've been here. Um, but for this, this year, we had a survey of 14 questions. Um, apart from the demographic and geographic questions, we focused on what was your experience like from a club and AV perspective, who is responsible for five uh, key items, um, in particular for clubs and for, uh, for Athletics Victoria, and who's responsible for growth? Um, and including, sorry, including in the survey were a number of open-ended uh, uh, commentary pieces, so you could have your say about any particular topic. And so far, um, the results have been well, extraordinary. We sent an invitation to 5,430 um, members, and that, they were all the members from last year. And I should take this opportunity for the seven people that are watching. Um, I've actually put the, this paper, um, it's in the same section where you download the link to um, this, this uh, YouTube streaming, so you can, can follow if you download the PDF. So as at today at 5 o'clock, uh, 1,227 have responded, which is just over 22.5%, which is amazing. Um, you can see the split between athletes, coaches, officials, club administrators and parents and a reminder that there may be um, people in all four or only one of those categories. Um, the spread across our age groups is also <laughs> impressive in the sense that we've captured a very good sample size of our 10 to 19 year olds um, right up to our 60 plus um, and our spread across uh, our clubs. Now it's unusual to have an other at the top of the, the results page. But with the 56 clubs, our others also branch out into our recreational running groups and, to, and also some of our uh, school um, kids that, and university um, students who are in both sets of the camp. Um, we did put in a section, um, I do not know, and so far we've had seven people respond. So we will contact them individually just to make sure they know exactly where they're going. Um, Glen Huntley, Box Hill, Dine Valley, Essendon in the country, Chilwell, Geelong, Taralgon, Bendigo, Harriers and Eureka. And that's just more for... Um, I suppose giving it a framework around how um, well the survey has actually progressed. Um, I wanted to focus on a couple of the key questions to give you a bit of a flavour. What is the role and responsibility of Athletics Victoria? And there were five categories. Deliver competitions, recruit, retain officials and coaches, educate officials and coaches, provide a positive and inclusive social experience or recruit new members and retain. And it was very specific um, that we asked uh, about um, ranking those five, not only to, uh, in relation to Athletics Victoria, but also in relation to your club. Now, I want to pause there for a second. There was a considerable amount of feedback um, around uh, a perceived lack of opportunity, lack of, of uh, topics in this particular survey. And I think it's really important to, to um, keep a survey relatively short, um, otherwise people lose interest. Now, on average, this survey took about seven minutes to complete. Um, and yes, we could have delved deeper into issues around recruiting reten and retaining officials and coaches and, and uh, particular members, but we wanted to get a snapshot um, to, to get that framework in place and to get an indication before we, we went uh, a little more in depth around the growth question. Um, so you can see that, that a majority of our members believe that we should deliver competitions, recruit and 
retain officials. And not surprisingly, um, this should actually say, sorry, clubs, my apologies, I've not changed it. So what is the role and responsibility of clubs? Provide a positive, inclusive social experience, which is um, a very strong result. Recruit new members and retain them as expected. Um, recruit and retain officials and coaches is um, certainly an indicator that um, there needs to be a bit more work done between um, the um, uh, Athletics Victoria and also all of our clubs uh, on how we actually deliver that aspect. You know, things like coaching frameworks, spending more time supporting clubs um, and to, to assist them um, with growth. How likely would you be to recommend the sport to others? A really healthy result out of 10, this question. Um, how likely would you be to recommend your club to others? And this sits particularly well um, for those of you that were at the Athletics Australia um, consultation process about 18 months ago. The Sports Commission had, has completed a study in 2014 suggesting that a majority of people no longer wanted to participate in a club environment. They wanted unregulated and fun sport um, and didn't expect a club to provide social activity. So this is a really good result uh, and it shows the strength of our club system in Victoria. Um, we then asked, what do you like about your athletics experience and asked our members to score out of 10. Um, and these are the results as at 5 o'clock today. Training with friends scored 5 um, out of 10. Representing my club, then competing for my club as part of a team. A pathway to state, national and international competition. And that's quite a broad brushstroke. So there is um, quite a distinct but large group of people wanting something completely different um, out of this sport. Um, and it does actually make it very difficult when it comes to competition structure to try and find the right platform in which to deliver um, an expectation to so many um, varying members. And we may, we're getting closer to getting it better. Have we got it right? Um, probably haven't got it 100% right. Membership growth was also important. Um, which pathway into Athletics Victoria do you think is most likely to attract new members? Athletics Victoria events and offerings presented directly to the broader community via digital platforms. So as a society we face our kids, our grandparents and our friends are spending more time on social media and one of the um, options that we're looking at doing is creating a, an online digital club. Uh, it's been trialled in the um, Cycling Victoria and an online digital club is effectively a community um, for certain members that we currently don't have uh, in our membership portfolio. Um, and effectively we've asked, you know, what does Athletics Victoria members think about that? Um, they've certainly been very positive. Um, but the overwhelming leader at this particular stage is partnering with clubs. Sorry, yep. Sorry about that. The overwhelming um, response so far is partnering with clubs to ensure a consistent minimum standard of athlete experience. Thanks, Hightower. Um, and then we also put in there a smaller number of clubs which can self-manage growth and run events. Clearly that's not the, the most popular choice. And again, these, these options were put out to start the conversation. I might just wait till that comes online. Um, for anyone that's just arrived, if you do want something to eat, please feel free to grab something at any point in time. There is, of course, some soft drink and water up at the, at the, um, in the fridge. And of course there is um, coffee and tea, so um, there's plenty of food, so no one's going to look disparagingly if you have a second or a third helping. So please help yourself. Sorry? Yeah, in the fridge, yeah. That's good. I don't know. Go back the old-fashioned way. Don't worry, Roscoe, we'll do it. The work's allowed to be nice if we can get up this
Okay, so while while our IT person <laughs> we'll do this the old fashioned way, which is before blackboards and so forth. Um, um, don't touch anything. Ah, thank you very much, Roscoe. So, I'll just wait for the last last people to grab something to eat. So, one of the open-ended uh, questions that allowed for commentary was, what is the one change at Athletics Victoria which could help deliver growth um, in the sport? And um, the results have been particularly positive. And this is what's called just a word cloud out of the survey. So, the analysis hasn't started as yet. The survey will close on the 31st of, of May. Um, the way that SurveyMonkey works is that the uh, words in the biggest font are the ones that are the most common in all the answers. Now, I think only 10 to 12 people skipped this question in the comments section, and we've got some incredible feedback, some positive feedback, some constructive feedback, and there's a plethora of things around growth. Um, forming stronger relationships with recreational running groups like Park Run. Um, spending $100,000 on media coverage, um, uh, getting our, our Shield competition and all our championship events on Channel 31. Um, but one of the biggest ones was merging with Little Athletics, which is part of the One Sport Charter. Um, I should welcome Anne Lord from the AA board as well. Um, the, part of the, the strategy is you know, looking at One Sport and kind of uncluttering the current pathway that we have. Um, Promoting our sport into schools, running a better summer competition, looking at um, affordable competition. There's been a lot of feedback about the cost of participating in athletics, particularly after um, the fee increases, advertising and publicity. And what we'd like you to do is to probably pick out a couple of these um, that uh, you have a direct re relationship or a direct uh, view about and have a discussion around your tables a little later, um, particularly around growth. Um, from that, these discussions, we'll be able to get a, an understanding of, of some of the common themes. But um, I probably will preface it by saying, gone are the days where we can walk into a corporate sponsorship or a company and ask for a million dollars. Um, even our government funding is diminishing um, due to a number of constraints. And so there are some challenges. And there's also some challenges in society. You know, 10 years ago, people would, would um, come to cross country and stay for four or five hours, or they'd stay for four, four or five hours at shield competition, or they would, you know, go right to a level four or level five. But society's changed, and we uh, are trying to keep up as best we can. But in our sport, there's quite a lot of things that we need to do, particularly in summer, um, in order to provide each of those disciplines. But the question predominantly is, is around growth. If there is a word up there that, you know, is, is not there that you would like to talk about, then I strongly suggest that you table that and have that discussion. We also asked the question, what is the one change at club level which could help deliver growth in the sport? Um, clearly there was a, a very large um, number of people that said get new members. Um, but clubs at the moment, there are 56 of them ranging for 200, from 237 uh, down to 17 members and, and um, even uh, the simple governance requirements for, for consumer law as an incorporated association can struggle. Um, so there's certainly got to be, be some action from our, our point of view. And you saw the question before around um, AV should partner um, more strongly with clubs in order to provide um, a uniformed experience. Um, and that's certainly been a very strong message. Um, community engagement, um, more coaches around a, a framework, um, looking at the social interaction and again merging with the lats. So it gives you a bit of a flavour of, of what's coming out of uh, the survey. And as I said, it's, um, it's very constructive. Um, the survey is open to the 31st of May. I assume that people have probably already uh, completed it. Um, from that, the committee will formulate its um, framework and strategy. Um, and again, we're going to publish all of the results on the AV website. And we undertook to do that um, in this very room on the 25th of July 2015. Um, so all of our survey information is available. And as Rowan said, the strategy will be delivered um, at the AGM in July. So that gives you a bit of a taste. If anyone would like to, um, I've got a couple more copies of the information for the survey. I'll put one on each table. Um, but I'll hand back to Rowan who's going to give us um, an indication of what we're going to do with that group session.
Thanks, Glenn. Uh, there's really not a, a lot more to add other, uh, over and above what Glenn's mentioned there. So I think if everyone's comfortable in on the tables that they've just uh, accidentally or you know partially accidentally found themselves on, what we'd like to spend the majority of the evening on is, is a conversation in groups, um, some basic kind of uh, housekeeping to, to get that moving is it, it, it'd be nice if uh, as a group on each table you could appoint a note taker, kind of team captain, uh, and what we'll do at, at the end of probably about what 45 minutes conversation, Glenn? Yeah, a bit less than that. A bit less than that, 40 minutes conversation is um, bring it back together and have uh, <laughs> someone, someone from each group just give a summary of some of the, the two or three or four um, big themes that were discussed or that occupied the conversation per table and that way we can see, compare and contrast and see if different, see if there's something common from the, from the tables coming, coming together. Importantly, what we want to do is, we, it's really important that we get some notes though from each table, so that's a really important um, kind of admin thing. For us, um, Ian, Ross, Glenn and I will, you know, initially we'll try floating and kind of, and, and uh, floating around the tables and helping with the conversation. If, if we end up kind of anchoring, that's, that's fine too. Um, I'll just pause there. Is everyone reasonably comfortable and clear, and it feels like they're able to start start the conversation based on based on the kind of context and background that we've we've provided, or are we uh, do we if we've got a question? Now's the time to ask it, I guess, as a as a, as a group. Yep. We'd like to talk around the summary results. Uh, you yep. could. Yeah, I mean, you could do that, but don't feel constrained to that approach. So, I mean, really, if you want to really, really brutally summarise it, we, we're at a point where we need to make some big decisions on the strategy around how we're going to grow. That's that's what we that's what we that's that's a committee. That's our starting position. You could do two things with that. You could say, well, you know what, hang on, you've got it wrong. We don't want to grow, and then talk about talk about what that what that means. If we're all on the same page that we want to grow, what what we're really looking for is some is some views as to how we might do that. How we can work together as, a, as AV and clubs, what the future looks like, how we might invest, find the money to invest to do that. Um, these are the types of questions. So we'll, be, we'll come around and help, and help with that. Um, but that's, that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for, for help in writing the strategy. What's a strategy? A strategy is just the important things we need to think about over the next few years, not just, not just uh, you know, the precise format of the competition structure for next year. Whilst that's critically important and actually is part of the strategy, it's not, it's not the, you know, how we're going to attract I don't know, 10% per year of new members in through the club structure over the next few years. How we, are we able to do that? How could we do that? So that's, that's, that's the template. You could definitely anchor it in the, you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying don't, don't look at the surveys. You can definitely, um, that could, that's a very structured way of doing it, going through, the survey, going through the surveys. That's how it's been written. Did somebody else have a question there that I missed? Or you're all, okay. I reckon let's, uh, let's bounce the ball and get into it. We'll, we'll float around. So just for our people on streaming, um, we'll come back to you in about half an hour and we'll see you with uh, the results from the survey.
Right on. All right, we might um Okay everybody, we might wind it up wind it up there please. So I'll just give it uh, a fifteen second wind down. Scratch down your final summaries. I know everyone's enjoying the conversation, passionate, right in the guts of it. It's good to see. So can we, uh, if we can, can wind up and wind up and start to start to uh, bring our attention back to the group, back to the group, back to the group. Good.
Yep. Okay. Passion, 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 passion. Back in the group. <laughs> That's you, Ross. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to be helping. <laughs> All right. Okay. Peter Shush. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to start. So, thank you everybody for, uh, for the tremendous engagement in those in those sessions. We were around at a few tables, and it's um, it's I mean, what's obvious to start with is that everyone cares very deeply about uh, about the sport and wants to wants to make a, and just by dinner the fact that you're here, but certainly by the quality of the conversation and the intensity in some cases. Um, it's uh, you know, it's clear that everyone cares a lot and has a lot of ideas and a lot of thoughts. What we're going to do now, as we said before we started, is Hopefully everyone nominated a, a scribe slash summarist. So we'll hand, this is the talking stick. So I'm gonna, we're going to start, uh, we're just going to do a little around the grounds to the tables and get whoever you've nominated to do, to represent you, to, to give a rough summary of, um, of the conversation. So, and that's not, so it's, the only reason we've got a microphone isn't to intimid intimidate anyone. We're actually, um, uh, what are we calling it, Glenn? Streaming. Streaming on YouTube. So we have, I think, 10, 10 other people watching. So, so that's a, uh, so, um, yeah, that's right, that's right. So hopefully it's not, hopefully it's not people on their phones doing it, doing it here. <laughs> um, so let's, let's spend sort of five, five or a few, five or a few minutes per table summarising, you know, content, but also, uh, also, you know, the vibe of the conversation and where, and where you think you got to. And then we can come back after that together and uh, have a bit of Q and A before before we wrap up. Start another table. So start, start another table. All right, we'll start at this table. So Andrew, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we had quite a, a vibrant discussion uh, around a, a range of topics. Um, probably three ones that uh, our main note, note taker took uh, were around recruitment um, and probably promoting that notion around uh, social engagement. So looking at the, the club as being a social hub, um, as being a, a really important component of that, and having someone within that club whose role is around that um, engaging and recruiting and retaining. So you know, we have different members at our club. So we're at Collingwood, we've got one or two people who are really good at sort of a new person walking in the door, jumping on them straight away and, and uh, farming them out to various coaches, but um, sometimes there are opportunities that uh, where people don't get, you know, they might make contact with the club and repeated contact with the club and nothing comes of it. And so you're losing, so there's no really good, I suppose, systemised approach to, to actually um, deal with that contact. So, so that's probably something that I think as clubs we need to professionalise that process a little bit better. Um, from that point of view. Is everyone happy with that? Yep. Sound fairly good? From a retaining, uh, for retaining uh, point of view, um, the focus is around sort of building relationships and that's where you get that enjoyment. So relationships not only um, with the athletes and between the coaches and the athletes and other, uh, other club members, but um, relationships with the uh, little A's as well. So really engaging them and looking at pathways potentially um, around how to, how to do that. And probably the key performance managers in that area are the other coaches, because many coaches actually train across both little A's and seniors. And uh, I've sort of jotted a bit of a note here is um, looking at sort of training and developing coaches to be those sort of performance managers in some way. Um, you know, they're like most of us, stretch for time, uh, energy and capability, but if there is some way of, of uh, uh, training and developing them in a way uh, to, to help with that engagement and refer on, one of the things, and again, we'll just use our, our club as, a, uh, as a, a little case study, we're in the process of resetting our whole sort of coaching framework and pathway um, and the whole sort of way we go about delivering coaching at Collingwood. So we're just in the early phase of doing that. But that's one of the key things that we're looking at is identifying what we're about. You know, why are we doing this? Why are we here? And why do we want to actually um, be coaches? And if we can get that, those values and uh, mission sort of sorted out, then we can actually have a common message for whenever anyone new comes along. So they're, they're key things there. And the last part is around the coaches themselves uh, around the coaching environment. So how do we actually deliver a good quality product 
because it's really hard to keep coaches um, engaged when they're stretched for time. So what are some other ways in which we can actually help coaches do what they do? Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, one of the things we also looked at just from an engagement point of view is um, looking at the, the local um, businesses around that have similar sorts of um, goals, like the local fitness clubs. Can we actually recruit through them and, and build relationships with them? Because I know uh, we don't have a very good gym. It'd be nice to actually use their facilities and if we can make some sort of arrangement for their members to come and use our facilities, that might be uh, a good relationship from that point of view. So that's just some of the things. There's more details in the notes. Thanks for that. Um, there's, a, there's a bit there. Or maybe we'll, uh, we'll keep going around the tables and come back and talk a bit about some of the themes at the end. So who's... Um, Jeff? Yep. OK, thank you. Um, we sort of asked ourselves several questions. Um, what is needed to enhance athletics? And the comments from this table were um, keep local. It's important to have easy accessibility. Um, we need to s better celebrate athletics and celebrate the involvement of athletics. And that's whether it's through clubs or, or promotion, uh, external promotion. Um, better, well, the, the issue of little athletics, and there was sort of a number of comments there, needs to be better transition from little ats to senior ats because you know little ats provides a very large potential membership base and it's generally thought that that's not well utilized um, although there was also some comments about the value of little ats as a competition in itself that has some limitations so that was the first question um, the second question was um, what change at club level would deliver growth and the comments that were made were clubs need a, I guess a, suf a sufficient mass, a social mass for the people who are involved in the clubs to have sufficient of a similar ilk. So if there are you know, um, teenage girls, there needs to be a number of other teenage girls there, so for both for a social point of view and to, to form uh, cohesive teams. Um, what other things can be done to improve, uh, help deliver growth? Um, better club involvement in the community, stronger links to local schools, um, better coaching and, uh, and official development and, and better linkages with, uh, with, say, some of the universities, uh, those universities that um, you know, have sports science degrees, etc. We also spoke about summer competition and comments were that it needs to be more localised and there was the suggestion that clubs run competitions and some examples that were given were maybe Glen Huntley has an all, runs an all comers meet um, I think there is at Geelong there's the um, Steigen meet was mentioned as an example uh, another suggestion was maybe the clubs e.g. in the Bayside area and I'm with Mentone Club have a Bayside meet where Frankston, Mentone, Sandringham and Glen Huntley have a, have a competition. So th there were some positive suggestions there uh, about the, the summer competition. There were also some other comments um, in regard to the current competition. There were some advantages where uh, the consolidation, opportunity to meet more people and compete against uh, compete against a broader range of athletes but there were also concerns about too much travel, split the clubs, uh, the waiting time uh, after the one hour check-in was, was, was too long. Um, and so they were the overall comments from this table. Alright, let's keep cracking on.
Um, do we want to come back over here now? Yeah. Yep. Lance. There you go. Thank you. Oh, Raf, don't worry about that. <laughs> go on. Right, well, we, uh, we spoke uh, quickly, very concise. We never went off on a tangent or anything. I'm sure the other tables did. <laughs> We were very focused on the way that we went. Uh, we basically uh, spoke about growth, uh, the way to, to grow it. Uh, that's where we saw things needed to be done. Growth from both a, a AV and a club uh, perspective. Uh, the biggest point of growth was the schools. It's an untapped pond, it's huge, and there are a lot of connections throughout the schools, whereas in the PE teachers, uh, athletes and the such, so that's an untapped market for growth for, for the sport. Um, there are other situations such as the park runs, uh, very accessible for families, it's fun, um, there's a sense of belongings and you can run as groups there, uh, you've got your, your runnings, Tim, I think Tim does a lot to do with it. Um, and the clubs, teams and a sense of belonging as well, that's seems to have come through all the way through there. The athletes is a sense of belonging. Participation is also uh, paramount. Why do people want to come? And why do people want to stay? That's the two biggest questions that need to be covered outright. And once you, once you cover that, then we'll find that everything will grow and take it from there. Um, pathways, you need to be intentional about the pathway. You need to have an, an idea on where you want to go. You need a plan, you've got to make a plan. Uh, the pathways we've seen would be the schools to little s, seniors and obviously up to AA from there. And that is the pathway and then you start to plan where you want to go from there and when you want to bring your athletes in. Um, interactive is, is a true marketing at all levels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all, all of that. That's where you need to be with the athletes to communicate with them and get them to come back to you, interactive, rather than just broadcasting announcements all the time. Uh, the competition, some of the competition was, um, we felt was disjointed because of uh, transportation problems, you know, now that there is only two, pro, uh, two locations rather than the four, people are having to drive for a lot further to get there. Uh, we felt that that may have been a bit of a hindrance. Am I going too fast? No, I'm fine. Damn, I'll go faster. <laughs> Um, and, and also, with there being the two programs, uh, the splitting of the athletes, um, as you're all probably aware, with the duties and that, it's a lot harder to fill with athletes going here, there and everywhere. Um, not, not such a big problem, but it is, it is obviously a problem. It all compounds itself. And then also marketing. How are you going to market yourself? Uh, interactive, again, rather than just posting it out there. Um, such as the Kathy Freeman at ScienceWorks. Kids, people love competing against, them, against her there where they are. So interactive where they are. Um, there's athletes in other countries that are doing things and involving the crowd, and the crowd is right there. If you remember back to the Nitro, everyone was there and they loved it. Rather than being up in the grandstands, they were there, they could high-five them and all of that. It's very important to make people feel included. And then recruitment and retraining, the cadetship of officials, again through the schools and the clubs, rather than just asking for volunteers and expecting people to come up and see you. That's also very important. See, we were focused. Good table. <laughs> so now we've started clapping halfway through. That's a bit unfair. But anyway, um, who's the uh, nominated speaker on this final table? I'll back up everything that the previous speaker said. It's a hard act to follow. We, I guess, this is quite a dot point, but um, we hit on many topics, as you could well imagine. Probably the first, you know, the big concern is gradual drop in numbers. That was mentioned more as a, you know, a topic rather than any resolution coming directly out of that. Uh, we felt that... At all levels, club level, there could be more youth input, youth involvement in terms of social media, all the, the new digital age, uh, communication aspects and 
it really is the realm of the young, so we probably need more young people to advise, to run uh, that, those sorts of activities. Fee increases, in actual fact, there was quite good agreement at this table that quite, you know, compared to other sports, even though we've had maybe a bit of a steep increase, fees for athletics, not really so bad. We hit upon um, perhaps one of the great uh, holes in, in recruitment is recreational runners, particularly into the endurance events. Maybe there's um, a lot more scope to recruit all these recreational, some of these recreation runners. There's a lot of them out there at the moment. Uh, we felt that there was not very good coordination uh, from little athletics uh, into AV juniors and we hit upon there perhaps a, a lack of any real developmental plan. Uh, we hit upon a, a um, one that um, I certainly hadn't thought of and that was accessibility of our adult athletes to, to train given long working hours and um, even one of our members of the table on weekends to, to have more access into training groups. Uh, the process of membership uh, we hit upon, I didn't really write anything else on that one, so I won't elaborate too much. Club governance, it's been mentioned a couple of times and it's uh, certainly a, yeah, it's a big topic and it's a very important one. We recognise that there's a multiplicity of tasks performed by very largely volunteers. At club level, maybe there's, if Ross would agree with me on this, I think I've got this down correctly, but um, perhaps there could be a greater input, greater overseeing in those processes by Athletics Victoria themselves. Uh, we hit upon probably most people would to the social structure within clubs. Um, I think it happens pretty much anyway, but people obviously need to be made welcome, clubs to run social events, which probably a lot of them do. Uh, an interesting one was coming out of Little Athletics, uh, Ross in particular mentioned about the, the UK model about um, in that under 14 area, maybe we could think more about a greater teams based competition rather than maybe, if you like, throwing them in the individual deep end, that they'd be more comfortable um, in a more team environment before going on to the more difficult uh, development from, say, 15 onwards. Again, probably this is repeating a little bit one of the earlier points, but uh, we don't appear to be recruiting successfully out of little A's whilst fully recognising that there's, in my opinion, there's this horrible overlap of age groups. And I think, no, I won't say that. Um, it's not what I think. No, 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 I won't say it. It's not, it's, this is a table opinion, people. And... Yeah, I'm not going there. Um, the last one, which I wrote very late in the piece, and somebody else mentioned it, partnerships with schools. Now, do we really fully get into that? Do we really fully push that? It's an obvious zone where we could make perhaps a lot of gain. I, look, I know my own involvement with the APS there's a lot of effort, there's a lot of coaches working in that system, but there's probably a far greater number of holes in terms of recruiting from schools. And I think that's an area that we could, we, clubs, AV could certainly look at. And that's about the last of my dot points. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for all that input. So, Glenn has done a uh, 
terrific job of, uh, of capturing, the, capturing those notes. So we've got, you know, effectively mission accomplished. We've got what we wanted from the evening, which is some, some great um, suggestions and ideas around uh, and input to how we frame the, the strategy that we're working on at the moment as part of, as an output of the consultation. Um, what I reckon we might do now, I mean, I've got a couple of comments that I can make around, you know, um, I suppose hoping to elicit a bit of, a bit of sympathy for, for what this all means if you're on the committee of AV. So, so um, those ideas we need to work out, uh, you know, which are, the, which are the most appropriate ones to, to pursue and then how we're going to find the resources to pursue them. So, for example, there's quite a bit of discussion tonight around, um, and actually what was really apparent to me from listening to the, all, that, all of that feedback from the tables is that, you know, the engine for growth, for attracting new people into the sport is the clubs whether that's the clubs partnering up with schools or doing a better job of welcoming new members or whatever it is. Um, and how, how do, as a, collect, as a collective, as a group of clubs, how do we, how do we create that uplift? So um, if, it's, if it's a matter of AV, the professional side of AV, Ross, Ross and Glenn's team providing support and frameworks so that clubs can do a better, there's a, bit, a better standard of that, of that work being done out in the clubs, how do we do that? How do we make sure the clubs are happy for us to do that? And how do we resource it? Because it doesn't, it's not free. So we've got a response over here. Question on that issue. Yep. Does AV provide a template for the club? This is what an ideal club looks like in terms of governance, <laughs> recruiting, relationships, marketing. To, to uh, actually, Ross, why don't you uh, address that one, mate? We've, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've, uh, there is there has been a lot of work on the last few years on that. I just wonder if there's actually subtitles on the uh, on the video for for my accent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so at the moment, um, one of the things that we're working on, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Glenn, is is through the Club Connect scheme. So there's what one of the things that we've been discussing is the third year program of Club Connect and how we try and create some um, governance, club governance, and we, we spoke about it on the table as well in terms of how we look at a template for um, a club to, to look at re recruitment, to look at where they approach and how they do it, um, and also to, 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 I guess, support um, the local community. So it's, it, it's almost, and, and I'm probably speaking on behalf of the group here, we, we threw up a, a number of ideas and, and concepts about um, club governance, and, and, and a lot of it was linked to the club committee, and perhaps some of the committees may not necess necessarily be the right committee, um, and, and, and look at ways to, to increase participation through little athletics, through local schools, and um, through the schools framework, um, but also providing a framework or a template to support that. Because I think what what we're understanding so far is, and having went out to the clubs already, or some of the clubs so far already, is that they may not necessarily be geared up to doing that. Um, and I guess that's where we come in as an organization to support the clubs to, to, to try and deliver on our expectations, if that answers the question. Would that be about right, Glenn? Um, this particular slide, uh, partnering with clubs to ensure a consistent minimum standard of athlete experience. When we had the president's meeting, um, a lot of the presidents um, adopted um, uh, best practice to recruit. And that was, well, I sent an email in 2015. I haven't had a response. And, and that concerned um, the committee. Rowan was there, so was our president, our other vice president. And what it highlighted is, is that... that um, the second extension of Club Connect is around that marketing and communication. Um, and it's so important. And there's a, di as a dichotomy, no, a difference of opinion that it got down to the stage where we could map, we can tell you every primary school and every high school and every university that's within your region. Um, and we suggested that, that we could help with the introductions and there was a, a split view as to whether AV should split up those schools and assign them to um, various clubs. Uh, and we said, well, look, it, it, it's you're on the ground. And the community piece um, was very strong from clubs saying, look, we are the local community, you know, and we have to do a lot of work um, in order to maintain those relationships. I think the other problem is, and, and perhaps it's the elephant in the room, 
we appreciate the work of one or two people in a club that have been doing it for 30 years and we really need to start supporting the succession planning and the transition. And the difficult part of that change management process is there are people whose lives are so dependent within those clubs that it can be a very daunting, daunting task. Um, and we talked about aligning clubs and per perhaps sharing resources. And one option was to, um, and we've approached the government on this, is to get some funding for AV representatives to sit in each, each zone or region, seven around the state, and be that conduit that could go on, have the conversation with schools and, and, and but unfortunately that costs probably about $300,000 and the Victorian government is not um, uh, able to provide that. But definitely it's an outtake that we'll go back to Kirby and her team at Club Connect saying that this is a matter of urgency to get those templates in place. Very good. So hopefully that gives a bit of a flavour. I mean, this is, you know, the, one of the first things that was said on the table that, that I was sitting at over here is there's no silver bullet. I think that's true. And actually, going back a few weeks to the president's meeting, with one of the first one of the first things that was said at the table I was at then was, "Geez, running a club's hard. It's hard. Like, how do I find the time? How do I find the volunteer resources? The world's changed. I, I could run it 10, 10, 15 years ago. I could run it with a with a landline and some goodwill through the local shopping centre, and now I've got a I've got to know social media, I've got to be able to publish a website. It's bloody hard. So this is, I th yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all voluntary, right? So, so it's, um, you know, again, it's been a really good conversation. There's no, again, there is no, there is no silver bullet, but um, how do we, how do we find, it's not always about money. So how do we, how do we find the resources, whether it's people's time, goodwill, uh, we're, we're a large community of people with lots of skills. Uh, you know, please, if you're interested in, in, in being of service to AV in a way beyond your club, you know, keep that keep that in mind too. Um, that you know, the, potentially, there's we have to look at things like how do we how do we uh, create other bodies other than just the committee and the and the comps committees. You know, perhaps there, perhaps there's other there's other ways we have to tap the resources that we've got available to us. But certainly one of the things that's really important that we've identified that's really important as a committee out of this process is to frame a clear strategy so that when we're going to our own community to ask for help and ask for, ask for um, the resources to make progress, we're clear. And when we go to other stakeholders like government and others, as Glenn and Ross have mentioned, we're clear as well. So that's, that's our job in, in the first instance is to try and distill all this and get to a clear way forward. And again, you know, um, pleading for sympathy, as you can see tonight, there's a lot of there's a lot of themes, but there's a lot of diverse opinions too, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot you know, an observation. There's a lot of uh, um, expressions of what the issues are in the sport, or what, what's important in the sport that are that are based in self-interest. You know, people people want, which is fair enough. People want to have the they want to have a good experience that suits the reason that they've been attracted to the sport. But to be successful in framing a strategy and getting to where we want to get to, we all have to sort of lift ourselves out of our own self-interest, I think, to some extent, and, and make a contribution. So that's my kind of, you know, the, one of the things that happens after a consultation process like this that we're all responsible for is to move into some leadership. So we have to, we have to form a view, a consensus view ideally, and then influence and lead and, and, uh, and create the work to do to get us where we want to go. Um, so that's, I might finish with that, those few comments around, if anyone's, anyone's got anything they want to add or say in addition to that, yeah, sure. Um, uh, so Simon Baker, I'm on the uh, Track and Field Coaches Association board. Firstly, I just want to congratulate AV and the committee in this process because I think it's, it is really a fantastic opportunity for, as you said, so many people who are really committed and really interested in the sport being able to input directly to, to the committee because I think that's, a, that's quite a, a significant leadership approach. So thanks very much for the opportunity. Um, uh, I don't know if, if many of you are aware, but there's a memorandum of understanding between the Track and Field Coaches Association and AA, precisely to be able to help with the improvement of coaching framework, coach education. And, and I think it's, a, it's, it's a, a, an opportunity where, w from my perspective, the, the Coaches Association can get some input on what we see as a vital role of the coaches and how we can best deliver on exactly the sorts of outcomes that you have. At, as our discussion was happening, the athlete's relationship in a club is the relationship usually with their coach. And it's that coach and the coach is having those skills that can, can take them or help take them on that journey that they take, have that connection for the, 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 the mature athletes who are trying to start and get involved in the sport as well, all those sorts of things. So 
we really, I, I think, as part of this, uh, and it was something I mentioned to, to uh, Glenn, was that um, how we approach our coaches, the needs of the coaches and the needs of the sport and the sorts of coaches that they need, we need, our sport needs that can deliver these sorts of outcomes are going to be an important part, I think, I hope, in this discussion paper and the strategy that you bring forward. Thank you. Well said and thank you, Simon. Um, Janice? In other sports, um, uh, you tend to have um, people within that sport who are very well known, particularly like you see AFL people, and they'll go and they'll, the players will go and coach the younger players and there's interaction like that that happens. And I think that's really pivotal in making the decisions for younger people to get involved in a sport. So perhaps the face of our, our elite need to come out of the woodwork and do something that brings the community together. In Nitro was a great example of that. But I think there needs to be more and it needs to be more accessible. Um, there were some ideas floating around about a 10K race around here somewhere where you could potentially have people like that involved. That's and, uh, and awesome. Yep. Yep. It is a bit of a um, that's that speaks to market competition. So there's a bit of there's a little without getting into the details. There's been a bit of history with um, us attempting fun runs. We've got some way back in the way back in the day history with fun runs. We've we've missed the boat a couple of times. Um, but to your comments, Janice, about the um, the link with elite athletes. Obviously, that that's kind of uh, um, makes the point that AV strategy and AA strategy have to be of a piece as well. So um, very important point. Uh, we're, how are we going for time, Glenn? Uh, we've got 10 minutes to go. But, yep. So if we, we're here. We've got, we've got 10 minutes to our kind of a lot of time. If anyone, anyone's got some comments they want to add, or so we'll go here, here, and here. Yep. Yep. See, one, one of the things we, we discussed on, on our table was, was bringing the, the athletics to the people. So, as you say, with the Nitro, they were sort of, it was almost interactive there. Um, in days gone by, there's been things like a pole vault and a shopping centre thing there where the people have stood around there. And we, we have a similar thing at the, the Diamond Creek Fair. They, there's a pole vault competition. It's, um, yeah. We've got some of these big athletics events. We've got things like the Melbourne Marathon or the um, Run for the Kids when there's 15, 20,000 plus people that have got there. We should have something like that going sort of at the... Um, in, in, in the carnival atmosphere there, or maybe have Big Damo throwing a 16-pound shot sort of in a sort of an enclosed area, and then inviting the public to come in and uh, basically take the, take the game to the people and, and show them the engagement, so show them that anyone can have a, have, have a crack at it and see just that it, it's possible. Great. So rather than me add commentary in between, in between comments, I'll keep, just keep trucking on. We had one over here. Just more of a opening it up there. I have spent a lot of time um, living in the country and uh, was involved with a club myself, or a couple of clubs actually, over time. I'm not sure whether many people in here are from country areas, but I just thought there are different issues that are occurring in the country that uh, maybe hasn't been brought up here, so maybe that's for another forum. But um, I just wanted to make sure that that's not lost in, in what we've been talking about here. Just on that, we, the, you know, the, um, there's lessons to be learned from successful uh, you know, successes in the country as well. That was something that came out at the President's meeting. Um, over here. I was just going to ask, you're talking about how many members you're losing, and Glenn, you talked about churn last week and the officials lunch. Have you actually done a deep dive and had a look who's leaving? Are you talking men, women, kids, adults? Let me answer that one. Um, so uh, what um, I presented to the officials lunch was just a bit of a, uh, an analogy that over the last six years we've, we've had um, a 32.5% churn out rate and a 30% churn in rate. 
um, which is somewhat similar to Little A's, um, we've started to drill down um, on the data. Um, a lot of them are the 15 to 20 year old gentlemen. Um, that would be the biggest group who are, are in that, that phase. That's about as far as I've got. Um, we have seen a lot of, um, there's been a considerable lot of movement between clubs um, as well, which is um, in the process of looking at churn. Um, I think we're up to, on average, between 80 and 100 um, members move on a yearly basis, which doesn't quite answer your question, but it's another component. But we've now got a good bandy of stats that um, both our membership um, team members, so Kirby Ellis and James Coleman are both um, graduates with psychology degrees and they've got this super um, data analysis program which they're now churning, churning, they're using all the data so we can certainly em embellish on what we've seen but um, what was very evident 16 or 15 to 20 year old males. Ab absolutely and, and it's, it's actually a, a real challenge. What I love about hearing all of the, the, the commentary and the notes that I've taken is that um, there is this I think common goal that we all want to want to grow, but we have um, not. We don't have one set of, of challenges in each club. It's it's so different. Whether it be you know um, a relationship with a coaching framework or a, a schools or a community engagement process. So not one size um, fits all, which is certainly very strong out of the messaging we've got here. There's definitely a um, a lack of market research in our sport, um, and again that costs money and needs to be, needs to be funded. Um, and I mean, as part of the kind of options paper, you know, one of the natural kind of um, uh, disconnected from the reality of the sport sort of suggestions that you put up that when you're trying to work out how to solve for this is uh, if you want to market to potentially new participants in the sport, given that, given that the way into the sport is through the club model currently, and we're still working out how to do that in its optimal way, that's where the idea of potentially a separate channel, that's what you call, that's the kind of marketing term for bringing people in a channel, like a, of a digital offering that we talked about earlier, that's where that kind of thought bubble came from, which is not to say that's something we should, or should do or where we'll land, but that's just to try and explain some of the logic. So if you need to bring new people into the sport, how do they come into the sport? Through the clubs. The clubs are all independent entities, so AV's got limited control, as we've just discussed, over and ability to support um, a consistent level of experience for new athletes into clubs. It's quite different, different depending on the values of the clubs and who's there and how mature and how big. So that's a challenge, that's just a technical challenge. How do you, how do you make sure, how, if you were to go out and advertise and do a mass marketing campaign, you can't off the back of that mass marketing campaign guarantee the same experience for all people coming into the sport. So that is just a fundamental, you know, that's a fact on the ground. How do we, how do we solve for that? That's why we're doing this. We're trying to work out how we can do it. And that's why it's, it, hopefully it's really clear that if we don't do it together, we're not going to do it. <laughs> um, sorry, I had to, I'll go over this. Um, I think that uh, you were saying something, Glenn, about um, how not one size fits all and, you know, we all slightly need different things for different clubs. Um, I think it was last year we came to like a social media workshop that was held here. And I have to say that, like, for myself and our club, we got a lot out of that. So we have recently, finally, redeveloped our website, which is, like, a pretty big thing for us to have done. And we also are using MailChimp. We also are on Facebook more regularly. We're getting our Instagram back running, you know. So I, I just wanted to say, like, there was a lot of value in that and that, um, you know, obviously not every club will want to attend every... Uh, event that you can hold or workshop but if you keep offering things on on a rotating system of different topics um, that might be one way to consider getting people in and obviously like live streaming it will help those people that can't attend in person as well so I just wanted to add that thank you very much for that comment did you um, yeah I, I thought it just came to me um, while you know this was just being discussed about ways to bring new people into the club environment. Um, I just thought that perhaps it might be an idea for clubs to try and hold, like maybe once every six months or once every three months, um, depending on the level of, of availability and time and, and resources, but to hold a new members' day or a new members' night, a, a gathering where 
all the new people, people who want to, you know, have signed up recently to join um, the club, can come together and just like what we even what we're doing here now, just come together and have a bit of a meet uh, over a cup of coffee and a bite to eat, and just to get to know each other, to meet the coaches, to meet the the you know club volunteers and all of that. I think that's a really good way for people to integrate new people to come in and, and introduce themselves and to get to know the environment because that's one of the things I think could improve with um, you know just attracting new members and, and actually helping to integrate those new members and um, um, making them feel at home. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. That's a great comment. Um, Okay, here we go. So we have an actual comment on our streaming here. Bring school head coaches, heads of sport, school principals, ask them what sort of competitions they would like to see. And somebody else responded, good idea. This is, <laughs> that's Coach Knight, that's in uh, K-N-I-G-H-T. So we, we know who that is, yeah. Awesome, so there you go, we are, we're in, we are kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Um, uh, you know, and I don't know, so we're here, yeah, we're here tonight, well, I think we're getting pretty close to winding up. So I, I might—I mean, I've—I've I've made quite a few comments. So again, I'll, I'll just add. What did you? Sorry, do you want to? Hang on. Sorry. Whilst there's no silver bullet, and I don't think there is a silver bullet, I think it's pretty clear that there's a—you know—there's various opinions, but there seems to be one common thing, and I'm not sure if it's just my bias schools mentality. But school seems to be it. For us, uh, for School Sport, I work for School Sport Victoria. So for School Sport Victoria, our participation rates in 2016 was 76,000, just for track and field, not cross country. And then for um, last year, they went to 87,000, which I think is 11,000 growth is, is massive, but that's a huge amount of participation rates. But, and that's not even going down to the lower level, and it's going to increase because each school has been given a bucket of money, at roughly around 3,000, to increase the grassroots sports, and track and field is one of the ones that's, it is the biggest for us, for sure. I guess I'm just saying that there's just, there's something, and I, I don't have the answer, but there's something missing in the equation when schools participation is going up, and, it, and from what I'm hearing, and I don't have any data on it, that... AV and LA Vic are dropping, and I'm I'm saying that as a massive fan of both sports, I, I, yeah. both organisations. I love track and field. I live, eat, and breathe it. But I think there's just something missing in the equation. So whilst there's no silver bullet, it would be a good thing to take one thing that we're all going to be focused, you know, laser focused on, and do that. And maybe schools is a great place to start for that. I think that is a great punctuation uh, point to put on the evening. Uh, once again, thank you everyone for taking the time on a, uh, on a Friday night to make a contribution to the sport we all love. Give yourselves a round of applause. And uh, unless Glenn's got something he wants to add at the end, no, he doesn't. Let's uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, rest up if you're running tomorrow. Thank you.